Now, now I come to the concepts. Now I talked about the three Devis, right? The divine manifestations through Cancer. I talked about Parvati, the mother. Because Cancer is the fourth house of the natural zodiac. So Parvati is always seen as the divine mother. She is the mother of all creation. She is Durga. Then we talked about the sign Libra, which is the seventh house of the natural zodiac. We talk of Lakshmi as the spouse of God. That's why the seventh house of Libra is like spouse, like Lakshmi. The one who brings fortune, the one who gives wealth, business, everything. Then we talked of the twelfth house of meditation. And we talked of Saraswati. Pisces, natural twelfth house of meditation, of moksha, of knowledge. How can you have moksha without knowledge? And what is pure knowledge? I don't know. We need to find out. And how do we find out? Through meditation. Yeah. Sagittarius is only spiritual learning. Learning is all the religions. You see, that's, that's what Pramarishi was talking about. He talked about all the religions, right? All religions of the world come from Sagittarius. And Sagittarius indicates two kinds of things. What does it indicate? Battlefield. Did you know that? All battlefields are indicated by Sagittarius. And all the religions are indicated by Sagittarius. So when people say religion is the cause of battle, they are right. There is nothing wrong about that. Jyotish proves it. But the Veda is in Pisces. Okay? Because that's where the knowledge is. Knowledge is from the word Ved. Veda is knowledge. Pure knowledge. Transcendental knowledge. That's in Pisces. That's Saraswati. That's why all the Shankaracharyas in India are always referred to as Saraswati. Brahmananda, Saraswati. Jayendra, Saraswati. Chandra Shekhara, Saraswati. All the Shankaracharyas will have one title after their names. That is Saraswati. They have to embody the pure Veda. They have to. They have no option. Did you get the point here? So we got the three manifestations of the divine feminine. Now let's talk about the divine masculine. When do you go to God as a male, a masculine? Masculine means protective. Somebody who wipes your tears. You are crying and you need somebody to wipe your tears. Scorpio? That's not God. You don't go to God when you suffer from past life karma? When do you go to God? You go, right? Exactly. When do you go to the temple? When everything is just good? Or church? You pray for something good to happen in your life. When do you pray? When you are suffering, when you want something. This is natural. There is nothing wrong with that. All beings do that. All human beings are doing that. So we need God in Aquarius and we need God in Scorpio. We really need God over there. Because if we don't have God over there, there is no God. There is just suffering and no God to help us out of that. That's why when the sun and the moon go to the sign Aquarius, we say Om Namah Shivaya. You see the point here? When you are denied... When something is taken away from you, when the worst suffering of the poison of Aquarius comes into your life, there is only one who can take you out from there, Shiva, the Holy Father. Therefore, whenever you see the sign Aquarius, please remember Shiva. Whenever you see Saturn giving a terrible beating to somebody, Remember Shiva. Whenever you see Rahu stabbing somebody in the back, remember Shiva. So did you get the hard point here? The male energy, the Purusha energy that we are talking about here, God is manifesting through feminine energies and through masculine energies. The feminine energies are the benevolent energies of Cancer, Libra and Pisces. The masculine energies are the protective energies that are preventing the suffering. So we remember him as Shiva 
when we suffer from the poisons of Aquarius. That means Saturn and Rahu can be fully cured by Shiva. 100% cure guaranteed. Mars and Ketu can be fully cured by Vishnu. So we talk of Vishnu when we are suffering from Mars. Somebody is chasing me with a gun. And I want that bullet not to come out of the nozzle. I need Vishnu to protect me. Mars. When you have a Mars problem, when you have a Scorpio problem, you will have to go to Vishnu. When you have a Ketu problem, you will have to go to Vishnu. So did we get the point here? What are Mars and Rahu? Wind. Mars and Rahu are wind planets. Windy planets. Vayu Tattva. We talked about that in the first day. Remember the first day notes. Go back and check the first day notes. Air or the wind is ruled by which planets? Mars and Rahu. Fire is ruled by Sun, Mars and Ketu. Sorry, uh, that was Saturn and Rahu. Wind is Saturn and Rahu. Mars, Ketu and the Sun is fire. Human beings are scared of what? Are, are, are you scared of water? No, water is healing. Water is what saves us. Water is the feminine that is protecting us. The fire is burning us. The wind is uprooting and throwing us, giving us terrible diseases. So when the wind is tormenting, we need Shiva. When the fire is burning, we need Vishnu. They are just different aspects of that same one God. So when I am talking of Vishnu, I am Vish, the word Vish means poison, Nu means remover. Scorpio has a lot of poison, does the scorpion have sting? Is there poison in that sting? And how is that poison? Is it, when it stings you, how do you feel? Do you feel an itch? What do you feel? Burning. So there are different kinds of fires. The burning of the sun is a real fire. The burning of Mars is... is a devastating fire or anger, which is bad, very bad. And the burning, the Ketu's fire is the sting. One touch and you will, like a snake bite and you burn to death. You see the point? But a crocodile bite, there is no burning out there. Suddenly one limb has gone away. Right? The shark bite. I mean, it's just gone, the whole body. That is all Saturn and Rahu. So, did you understand Shiva? When we need to go to Shiva, when we need to go to Vishnu. These are just names. And these are sounds. Vishnu is said to be the starting sound. Uh, which is the first sound of the Sanskrit. It's a, uh, a. Uh, so, whenever somebody is attacking you, when someone hits you, what do you say? Ouch! Ouch. You actually worship Vishnu. <laughs> but that's the truth. That is the truth. The, the natural sound. That is the worship. Which is the last sound? Ah! Ah, ah, you said ouch and ah, that is Shiva, ha, ah. the last sound, like breathing out, ah, that's breathing out, the breath going out, leaving the wind, that is the worship of Shiva, therefore Shiva's sound becomes the letter H, ha, ha, om, then we take om, we say om is God, om is the Veda, and to that we add these sounds. So if I add ouch or ah, ah, you know, ah has got two parts to it. One is the starting A and the other is the ending H. Right? For me, everything is mathematically derived. 
or naturally derived. Okay. When you said ah, what did you say? Right? That's how you expressed your pain, right? Irrespective of whether it was sorrow or whether it was burning. The beginning we use as Vishnu and the ending is Shiva. To this we add Om. So what do I get over here? What do I get over here? Simple. So I can worship Vishnu with just one sound, Aum, and I can worship Shiva with just one sound, Haum. That's all. So all you need to know is some good meditation. You got two sounds by which you can ask for the pain to go. So for Scorpio, problem you have to do, Aum. Otherwise the poison is, the burning is not stopping. For Aquarius, you have to do, Haum. Otherwise the shock is not going. For Saturn problem, you need to do, Haum. For Mars problem, Aum. Two things you must remember. Because I am giving very simple solutions and 100% they are going to work. Provided the person knows meditation. If they don't know, I cannot help. Then we have, we need a priest who is going to do the whole puja, he is going to do this. I mean, we will have to go through the whole somebody else cycle. Self healing is out. You want to heal the self, you need to, you have to learn meditation properly. If you can go into the transcendence with this sound, you will get the nectar and come out. Okay? Now, we have two problems that we have sorted out, right? One is a problem of Mars and Ketu, and another problem of Saturn and Rahu. Yeah. While you're doing those, I'm just curious if you talk about Ram a little bit. I was just going to talk, yeah. if you will allow me. So, what is the third, the last one left? What is one other malefic planet, which the West doesn't accept as malefic, but I say it's burning, right? The sun, the sun is also malefic. Why is it malefic? He denies light. Yeah, light. He says, you know, you deny that light. The sun in us gives us an ego. And we are not accepting the real sun. The duplicate sun, the mock sun, is accepted as the real sun, which is wrong. I am not God, because I am not yet ready to be God. When you are God, you will be, or you are ready to be God, to be with God, then, then you don't have a problem then. So the sun is a very serious problem. We all have the problem and the solution, and that is a soul level problem. That is really your problem with yourself. That is the problem of the sign Leo. And Leo is the fifth house of the natural zodiac, which is knowledge. We don't have complete knowledge. We believe we have complete knowledge. And we have terrible egos that tells us we have complete knowledge. And, those, and that terrible ego is crushing our spiritual evolution. That's the reason why we need Ra. Egyptians called him Ra. Hindus called him Ram. You need Ram to deal with your ego problems. <coughs> so what are the three sounds that you need? What do you need? Ram, then Aum and Haum. And among these, which is most important first? Because that, if you don't have it, you cannot even heal the others. Exactly. So you need Ram to develop the power to go to Aum and to go to Haum. So basically you need three sounds, just three sounds and you will never have a problem in your life. They are Ram, Aum and Haum. And all these three need proper initiations. They just, you just cannot take it like that. This Ram is called Guru Initiation. When you get Ram, you have got a Guru. 
Aum is called Brahmana initiation. Brahmana, that means you have become a Brahmin. When you become a Brahmin, you have got Aum. You will not have any more violence inside. All the violence will go away. No more Mangal problem, no more Ketu problem. No more violence, no more anger, no more fighting. Because you got Aum. And finally, when you have home completely, no more sorrow, no more rebirth. This, that is a stage between receiving and getting it fully. It's like getting a glass of water and then drinking the glass of water. The Guru can only give you the glass of water. How you drink that water, how long you take to drink that glass is your problem. And stop blaming the Guru for that. He got a glass of water. He put it in your hand. You said, ouch, it's cold. He again picked it up and put it in your hand. Ouch, it's hot. Again he put it, I'm not thirsty. This is what's happening. I've been watching. I'm a visitor. I watch. Then I see, with great difficulty, you take one sip. Hoof, enough for the day. My brain is foggy, I need rest. <laughs> How many more days? You need to get this. Then only you can get this and then you can get this. Okay? So you need to know where you stand. Because we have the solutions, but yet we cannot solve the problem. Why so? Because we are not progressing fast enough. I'm not saying that I have the solutions. I may have this. Right now I'm struggling with this. That is not even seen. You see my problem? I have got this when I was nine years old. This I am doing now. And this will take me even, I'm, I'm, it's not even in sight. As far as I am concerned. So I know where I stand. And what's the initiation on home? What is? Yeah, it's oh, Guru, Brahman, and then... Shaiva. That is the Shaiva. That is, that is called the Sannyasa. You are perfect. There is no more attachment. Mm -hmm. Sannyasa. That is the highest Nyasa. You are like a hermit. A perfect hermit. There is no attachment to anything. Somebody can ask you anything. Practicing, practicing that is very difficult. You know what I do? I love pens. I used to collect pens from childhood. These days I get pens. I keep it for a month. I play with it. I open it, wash it, this thing, fill it with ink, write again, wash it, put it. I do that. That's my toying, my child in me. About a month, two months from there, I pick it up and I give it to somebody. I've gotten over it. What you love the most, you must learn to give it away. It's very difficult. I don't know. I haven't got it. How can I tell you? Okay, but you got the answers to that, right? That now you know where the problems are. Where are the problems? They are in Leo. The sign Leo, which is ruled by the sun, they are in the signs of Mars, Aries and Scorpio, and the signs of Saturn, Capricorn and Aquarius. So, how many trouble signs are there? Five. Okay? Good. <clears throat>